What is up you guys? My name is Hussein and this video I want to talk about end-to-end -end encryption. Well, end-to-end -end encryption is kind of a new term that have been invented because of this engineering aspect of what we have today in the world of software engineering. And we know encryption guys, right? We talked about encryption and symmetric key encryption and asymmetric key encryption and Diffie-Hellman and TLS. Check out all these videos that I made and I, I'm gonna assume you know some of these concepts, especially as a backend engineer, I, I implore any anyone who want to learn back engineering to understand this, especially if you wanna dive deep into uh, the security aspect of it. That being said, how do you build a chatting application, guys? You're an engineer, right? How do you build it? Well, I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna have a centralized server, the first thing, it's the easiest solution, right? And then all the parties that wishes to communicate with each other, they communicate with the web server. Any communication, could be WebSocket, could be gRPC, could be REST, because you're old school, that absolutely works, even with a chatting application, yes, works. If I pull, I don't have to have real time, right? So. That's how we do it. Okay, let's let's take an example. How do classically building a chat application? User A, user B, and this is a web server. Let's go to web sockets for just for the sake of communication. So user A, which is Alice, establishes a two-way communication between itself and the server, let's say WSS, which is WebSocket Secure. That means it is an HTTPS upgraded, right, to a WebSocket Secure. That means it's also a TLS, right? That means the server and the client now absolutely in a communication channel. So they are encrypted. Sweet, right? How about Bob and the server? Same exact thing. They also encrypted. So anything you send between Bob and the server is encrypted. Anything you send from the Alice to the server is also encrypted, right? So what's the problem here? It's all encrypted. What's end-to-end -end encryption, this thing? Well, let's take a scenario of how this plays. Alice wants to send a message to Bob. Well, it says, hello, Bob, sup, right? So it takes, takes that message, whether you want it to send it as a JSON, right? And then automatically all the magic of WebSocket Secure will actually encrypt it for you and send it across to the server. So you don't even really need to care about this stuff. All of this stuff happens to you, right? You send this message and the server receives it. Automatically, TLS will decrypt it because it's a TLS termination server, right? It'll decrypt it, look at the content. Oh, this message is intended for Bob. Let me read this message and re-encrypt it with the other party, the TLS, right? And send it over. So I'm going to use the Bob's key. I'm going to do Diffie Hellman exchanges and all that. Ugh, right? So Bob will eventually send the message. What's the problem with this design? Some people don't like it because the server is actually seeing everything. Right? The server is decrypting the messages. It's in re encrypting them so it can potentially store them. So if the server got hacked, bad, right? Could your information could be leaked and it happened. Meet end to end encryption. End to end encryption is only applicable for this scenario where a lot of people want to communicate. You don't have it for peer to peer. If you're if you're peer to peer, by default you're end to end. Well, technically there is no middleman, right? Let's talk about this. How do I implement end-to-end -end encryption? Well, here's what we do. A and B, Alice and Bob, and there's this WebSocket server, right? What we're gonna do is, I am going to establish the key exchange. I need to establish a symmetric key that only Alice and Bob actually know, not double keys like what we had here, right? So what we need to do is we will need to implement the key exchange at a higher uh, level, which is like a layer seven, right? Where you you need as a client to actually write your own code, right? So what we need to do, first of all, before we're sending any messages, we're gonna tell the server, hey, this is part of the message, which is a key exchange. Part, I'm not gonna go through Diffie Helm, but essentially uh, the client, will generate part of the key and we'll send the public part of it and the server will just say, okay, it's just, it is a message, all right, right? It's still it's still encrypted with TLS, but the mess, the server will decrypt it, right? And then it says, okay, oh, this is a key. We'll just 
receive the messages. Nothing's fancy here. It can even see the, the key, which is public. And the other party, Bob, will actually take its private part of the key and just start to assemble the whole symmetry key. And then sends back information, its public variable of the Diffie Hellman back to the server. Server decrypts it and says, okay, well, let me server send it back all over to Alice. So Alice now have the rest of the key. So like it's like a like a Lego puzzle that is being completed, but only those two parties actually will have the final symmetry key beautiful so now eventually both of them now have the symmetry key and this guy doesn't have anything so now what do we do is we take the symmetry key encrypt stuff with it and send it over to the WebSocket server which will technically you're encrypting and then there is another another layer of encryption which is between you and the web server i know i'm complicating things here but so this is exactly what's happening, right? So the server will decrypt it and see, oh, this is just garbage. I cannot understand anything, right? So it will just say, but I do understand that this is actually going to Bob. There's some headers that actually tell me, oh, they're going, going to Bob, okay. Send it to Bob, and Bob will receive this garbage message, right? And will decrypt it with its symmetry key. So now the server actually doesn't know anything that's going on. So that's into end encryption. So instead of using two keys, Right, which is the TLS termination, you're actually implementing another pipe on top of them. How do you guys like this visual representation of things? Right? I'm not a good editor, so you're not going to see anything. It's just my hand. <laughs> but yeah, so that's essentially in a nutshell end-to-end -end encryption. The problem with this, guys. So WhatsApp does something like that when it sends information, right? It's So there are still encryption. So if you sniff here in the middle... You're still not gonna see. You're still still gonna see encrypted stuff, but you're not gonna get anything of it. Even the server doesn't know what's going on. The server knows that this is talking to this, and that's pretty much it. Some metadata. All right, but this metadata is talking to Bob. Uh, is Alice talking to Bob? Is this is also hidden from anyone here between the server and Alice sniffing? They don't even know that because it's like almost like a double encryption. We're not going into details. But what's the problem with this? How do I really know that Bob is actually... I'm talking to Bob. There's no way. Right? Because Alice could start the communication by saying, Okay, I want to exchange keys. And this is my public part of the key. And this is my private key, which nobody can see. Right? It's not like there. And then I'm going to send it. The WhoopSocket server reply back says, yeah, I got you. This is Bob's key and it, it will generate its own key. And we can generate, it can just send it back. How does Alice know that's actually Bob? That's in this server, in this case, the, the server is acting like a man in the middle attacking. How do you know? You don't. That's why WhatsApp have this thing called fingerprint or that allows you to actually verify that this is Bob. So you go to next to Bob and you can click, I'm gonna show the picture here essentially. You can click on the encryption and you can scan a QR code to prove that this is actually Bob. And once you do that, in your application, you know that this is Bob, usually from the phone number. That's what uh, WhatsApp work. So that is how you actually perfectly know that the server didn't actually generate that fingerprint. So from the fingerprint of the actual uh, client you know who's making the communication and it's the key belongs to the bob is not the web server is generating the key that's one piece of information and you see these guys all the time right how do i know if i'm forget about chatting and doing encryption how do i know if i'm going to google.com this is tls right how do i know that the server i'm communicating to is actually google how? Someone interested in the middle and can send me back uh, that part of the encryption and, uh, pretending to be that uh, Google. Because it's like, hey, this is my key. Oh, this is Google's key. How do you know this is actually Google's key? Meet certificate authorities. You see this padlock on your browser when you browse, right? When you browse, you go to the the server and the server sent back something called a certificate and a certificate is nothing but the public key of the server which has been 
encrypted and verified by a third party called the Certificate Authority. The Certificate Authority like DigiSign or Let's Encrypt or, or, or what else? Or VeriSign, all these Certificate of Third Party that actually verify that, oh, this is actually Google. We, we prove this. We know this, right? So you just put the trust on this third party. WhatsApp? Put the trust instead of doing a third party certificate, it's doing this doing this web trust kind of a thing, which is a fingerprint. Like, hey, go next to your friend, right? And just verify that fingerprint. And once you do that, we will know that. I mean, you can still don't know because you don't have the source code for WhatsApp. I, I, right, right. WhatsApp is not open source, right? So how do you really know? I don't know. You you can't really tell. You, you can you can just take their word for it. You can, they can put all this bells and whistles for you, but there's no way to do it. The, the app is a closed source, and the only way to communicate with WhatsApp is using WhatsApp clients, which is built by a WhatsApp company, which is Facebook. Unless you have the source code and you recompile it yourself and you make sure that they actually not generating this, uh, uh, the key themselves, then yeah. But even that, you cannot 100% be sure that this, you are talking to Bob, even with this QR thingy. Right, guys. So yeah, that's into to into, into into encryption. What do you guys think? Is it is it really necessary? Some people want to stop that because a lot of uh, you know hackers and, and terrorists trying to communicate with this, and and sometimes the government want to interfere, interfere, and try to sniff this communication. And sometimes you know this, and it's a it's a continuous struggle, right? I'm I'm perfectly fine if. If uh, people are reading my messages, I'm, I don't have anything to hide, to be honest. I mean, yeah. Sometimes people say, no, this is my privacy. I need end-to-end -end encryption. I don't need anyone to know this. Well, you can use peer-to-peer. Peer-to-peer is more, more secure, to be honest. Like, you come back to the same problem. How do I know that whomever I'm talking to is actually whomever I'm talking to? Right? You need some sort of third party. Third party third party even the certificate authority can you trust the certificate authority well yeah some people can trust the certificate authority one guy a few years back there was one certificate authority i think swedish i might be wrong that one guy managed to somehow get their private key and they he started issuing google certificate and some other certificates on behalf of that certificate authority. So if you if you can hack the certificate authority somehow like that guy is, then it's not be trusted and that certificate authority immediately will got banned, right? So certificate authorities, if got hacked, then it's a big, big trouble because uh, I could just generate my own um, fake Google certificate that it says issued for Google and it says 100% Mountain View, all that details, right? And the browsers will believe me because the browsers, which are clients, actually trust, right? It goes back to the trust and encryption. It's a very interesting topic, guys. I made this video just to discuss end-to-end -end encryption because I want to talk about another WhatsApp news, which is the forwarding. And they said it's inappropriate to talk about WhatsApp before actually explaining how WhatsApp works. So that's how WhatsApp works. Not sure. Did I miss anything? Tell me, guys, what do you think? Right? The comment, comment section below. And I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay safe out there.